You're listening to Uncle Jazz. What do eggs, politics, and stained glass windows have in common? Give up? Here's the hint. It's me, it's Ben Chan. Hello everyone, I'm Ben Chan, and this is my- Ben, I said you could be a pop-up, and that was it. <clears throat> Besides his incredible moustache, Ben Chan is known today for his political commercial artwork in the late 1900s and strong involvement in the rise of social realism. Sean grew up in Lithuania before immigrating to Brooklyn, New York after his family, made up of woodcarvers and carpenters, was forced to flee their country when their father was exiled to Siberia for alleged revolutionary activities. It was in New York a fair few years later that Ben would meet his wife, Bernarda Bryson, and create a lifetime partnership that would propel both of their artistic and political endeavours. But more on that later. Before Sean, there was... Picasso. Ever heard of him? One of the fathers of Cubism and a political activist through his work during and after the Spanish Civil War, Picasso's work is said to be a massive influence on Ben. Looking at the shapes, the colour combinations and underlining tones, you can see the connections. Despite the clear influences, you can see how Ben Chan's work strayed away from the traditional Cubism, taking a bolder approach of having recognisable faces, sometimes even of political people of power. Although nowadays the name Picasso is arguably more well known than Chan, in the world of political artwork you can clearly see more of Ben Chan's influence, from the tonal pops and simple lines to the recognisable faces of mockable political people of power. Not naming names of course. Let's talk about love! One of my favourite parts when researching Ben Chan was learning about his wife, Bernarda Bryson Chan, and seeing how their work influenced each other throughout their marriage. Unlike his artistic influence and well-known misogynist Pablo Picasso, Ben was said to be a wonderful husband to Bernarda, who would often refer to the couple as life partners. Now let's talk about art. This is a piece by the name of Contemporary American Sculptures, painted in 1940 by, you guessed it, Ben Sean. For me, I love the first glance appearance of this painting. It's tonal, it moves your eye around and reveals a deeper meaning that you don't need an art history degree to get. It feels more personal than Ben's other work, in my opinion. It feels like you're seeing his own struggle, how painting the dark realities of the American population during the Great Depression had taken a toll on him and his ability to paint objectively. The clean, clay-like gallery clashing with the paintings based on real photographs he took, to me, feels like what he sees when he stands in the gallery portraying his work. Now that that's over, I can finally talk about my own sketchbook. Oh, I want to talk more and you can't stop me because you're just a piece of paper. I love the variety of Ben Chan's work. His ability to depict an entire movement, an entire tragedy, an entire genre of motions is fascinating. Even down to the brush strokes, it's deliberately disguised within a palette hall, viewable artwork. A bridge into the real issues that he can't turn from even in his art. Before this becomes a two-hour official essay about how shunning Ben Chan and commissioning Andy Warhol to replicate his work as one of the greatest art thefts in the world, <sighs> I want to quickly talk about Ben's photography, of which he was used as reference for his paintings. His ability to capture life from just the framing is something in itself. But what I want to point out is the diversity of his subjects. Normal people. People who wouldn't be photographed at the time. People who he felt an artistic need to capture where history wouldn't. Okay, okay, now's your time, Ben. What any artist has to say is fundamentally human and profound public will ultimately take his work unto itself. But if his own conceptions are limited and narrow in their human meaning, it seems likely that time will erase his work. Wow. Oh, ben, no, I should have let you speak more. That, that was really, really good. Yeah, I, I don't know how anyone will take influence by that, but actually I do. With eggs, of course. Like a lot of social realism artists, Ben used Ed Kempura in his work, so I'll be trying my hand at that. Do I take a well at photographing real people? Specifically, real people in my life. People who are a part of my fundamental human experience. What do I paint? And I said three subjects. Aloneness. The impossibility of people to communicate with each other counts for the aloneness. And thirdly, the sort of the indestructible spirit of man to keep on going beyond uh, the uh, time when he thinks it would be impossible to arrive anywhere. <laughs>